Hello, friends. Welcome to the From Busy to Rich podcast. This podcast exists to inspire advisors like you to increase your profitability. We love that. And also your quality of life. We love that. But not just for yourselves, for those that you serve. I'm joined today, as always, by Wes Young. Hello, friend. How are you? Hey, buddy. Doing great. Awesome. We're going to talk about something that I know that every person who has uh, an appointment in the next week or two weeks, hopefully a week, <laughs> uh, hopefully has appointments coming up, uh, can apply and use. I think that especially will help those who are earlier in their career uh, or just feel like they're not great at navigating getting meetings. So Wes, set that up for us. Yeah, well, listen, I want to start by saying if you didn't hear last week's um, conversation, last week's podcast, please go back and listen to that because that's a big foundation for what we're going to talk about today. Um, and, and, and really it's, it all came out of this. I heard this keynote speech uh, of a Chris Voss who was lead hostage negotiator for the FBI. And one of the things he said, he said, the most dangerous negotiation is the one you don't know you're in. And, and so the big idea, the premise behind all of last week was this, is that most advisors are unaware of the first and one of the most important negotiations that are in when they're onboarding a new client or potential client. And that's negotiating the benefit of the doubt negotiating that, hey, I want to stop and lean in. I'm not just taking this meeting to be polite. I'm not just taking this meeting to tolerate. I actually want to engage, even though, as we said earlier, Andy, most of our clients that we want to work with are doing really good without you. And, and you know, but they are so intrigued by you giving them the, they give you the benefit of the doubt that you may have something more to offer. And so we went through some fun examples of like hostile situations that I've been in in the past and some examples of, how you answer the what do you do question in a way that negotiates the benefit of the doubt. So so go back and listen to that as the foundation. Today, here's what I want to do. I want to talk to to really two two types of uh, in environments. One is if you're a fairly new advisor. So let me, let me just tell you what life was like for me 21 plus years ago when I came in to the business through large insurance company. And what they did, and which is pretty common, is they said, as a part of the hiring process, we need you to write out all the people that you know. And they had, you know, some, some things that would jog your memory that kind of get the, who is this person to you? So basically what you were doing is you were defining not just, not just who, you know, but what level of influence you thought you had with them relationally. Now I had no financial influence with them because I wasn't a financial advisor before I became uh, a financial services professional in the business. So I came from a different industry uh, the electrical industry, but I, I, people liked me, people knew me, they thought of me well professionally in that particular area of discipline. So I did have some benefit of the doubt is like, well, Wes is a good guy and I like Wes. Um, and so that, that was a, a, a positive going for me, but I didn't have like, I like Wes because he's super sh- savvy financial guy and he's been doing this a long time. Right. Yeah. They didn't yeah. have the right context for you. Th- that's you know, right. That's, that's a challenge, right? Which right. I you can talk about. I mean, it's like, hey, I like you. I don't like you in that context. Yeah, I, or I just don't know about you in that context. And and so what what they would have us do the the, pro, the approach was this: is okay, you're gonna call the people on your list, and you're gonna say, hey, Andy, man, I recently uh, uh, changed changed careers. I'm with one of the largest. Uh, life insurance companies in the United States. That's uh, one of the oldest and largest life insurance companies in the United States. And one of the things I'd love to do is have you on my professional newsletter. And to do that, I just love to connect with you, walk through kind of the areas that you might be interested in. So I can send you things that are specifically tailored to the stuff you care about in the, in the financial environment. Now, now Andy, there wasn't anything untrue or wrong about that. But here's what I really didn't do in that statement. I didn't negotiate the benefit of the doubt. I didn't have Andy going, wow, man, Wes has a newsletter. Maybe there's something in there that I want, you know, and unless you have just a super wondrous person. But what most of them, if they liked me enough, what they would do is they'd say, well, well, sure, Wes. I mean, or can't you just, some of them say, can can we just talk about it on the phone here? Can you, I can tell you, you know, what questions do you have? What And, uh, and. And then someone would just say, no, listen, Wes, I'm not, if this is insurance, I'm not interested in, in it. You know, some are a little more direct and yeah. in, in their approach to it. And, and while they'd give us all these different things to say, and again, hey, listen, it worked good enough in those early days where I could get enough meetings and I could, 
learn enough to get good enough to then learn to have separate myself and all the things we teach and transform to accelerate that, uh, that, that things that took me, uh, um, you know, five years, I want them to take two years for you to get to the same point or things that took 10 years. I want them to take five. And so that's what we teach and transform. But, but let me just tell you, if you're listening to today, let me just give you a, a, a different narrative there. If I was calling you today, Andy, and it was the same exact environment, I'm a new person. Um, we know each other. You like, we like each other. Or we assume, I assume you like me. And, uh, and, but I, you know, I've been in another industry before this. And so right. I would call you and say, Hey, Andy, listen, man, I love, I, t- I told you I was making a career change and I've joined up with a, a really awesome financial firm. I'd love to come by and, and tell you more about what we do and what, and, 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 and really if you have a little time, I can even talk briefly about it now. And what are they naturally going to say? Well, because they don't want to meet with me. They're scared, right? They're like, he's going to try and sell me something. Even if I like Wes, I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't benefit of the doubt yet, but I would engage a phone dialogue at that point. I don't need to sit with them. I don't need to make them go somewhere or show up somewhere. These days, it's probably less that than, than yeah. it used to be because of Zoom. But but I would just on the phone, you can do this. You don't need to even go to a Zoom. You don't, because I don't want them to have to wait and schedule and then maybe not schedule because they're yeah, worried. What I'm hearing you say is um, remove friction. Remove friction. Right. Remove yeah, I'm gonna friction. Make it, I'm going to make it as easy as possible. If they're going to say no, I wanna, I'd like to say, hear it now because it's not going to get any better in the meeting. I know everybody thinks it is. I could just get them to the meeting. We'll have the meeting in this meeting. Say, so, so yeah, but I'd love, in fact, if you have just a few minutes on, if, 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 I, I can just tell you right now. Like, yeah, sure. Tell me. So it's, it's like they can't reschedule. We're already on the line together. And, and then what I would say is I'd say, so Andy, you know how it's easy to have a lot of your profitability disappear to the tax system when you're making an above average income. And you're going to say, yeah, I do. Or here's another way you could say it. If you like the no answer, Chris Voss often talks about it, make them say no. I'd say, Andy, is it crazy to think that a lot of people have a, a ton of money that disappears unnecessarily to the tax system? You'd be like, no, that's actually not crazy to think because I'm sure I do, you know? Is Either way. No, it's normal. Yeah. Yeah, that's normal. That's normal. But you're setting it up with the same, what do you do discussion? You're just saying it in that, in, in that regard. So, well, we, yeah. we focus on helping people with things like that. Uh, we're a financial planning company. And listen, if you're new and you don't understand this stuff yet, you, I'll give you a different narrative and things you could say, but this is, this is, it could still work for you. Um, we work with people and if Andy owns a business, I'm going to say that own businesses or with right. employees. Right. Uh, help it to help them identify and pursue their best financial opportunities. And probably what most people, if they're remotely like you are going to go, well, so, and what's that like? Like you're, so you're working with the CPA team or a firm and say, well, what we do is we start by just asking a ton of questions to try and figure out where you're at from a financial standpoint and about where you're going, the future that you care a lot about. Because once we know that, we can have great discussions around the areas of planning that may be most relevant to what you're trying to accomplish and go from mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. I tell you, like, let me give you an example. And then you could say, I had a client and you go through the paying their kids or going yep. through, you yep. know, yep. because they're going to go, they're competent. That's unusual. Nobody's talked to me about things like that. That's the benefit of the doubt. So I'd say, hey, if you, if you wanted to, we could schedule a Zoom. And honestly, if you're real new, you'd say, I'll get my partner on here who's been doing this for 20 years. Yep. And, and uh, we can kind of talk about the way this looks. Because the reason I joined up with this firm is because I knew early on in my early days, really intelligent people that have a bunch of money early on in your early days know you do not have the same level of competence as you're going to. But if, you just, if you're just clear about that, because that's the other thing, when you're negotiating the benefit of the doubt, you know what they doubt, Andy, if you're a year in the business? You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. And, and, and not that you're even insincere. You, you maybe can't evaluate your own level of competence. You might do something bad to me. Yeah. So while there is a certain demographic of person you can talk to that you don't need to bring in that other person that isn't going to assume that, they're probably not these larger, more ideal clients, but that's where joint work and help comes in. So it's a really easy way to set that up in a way that gives you the best opportunity to have the benefit of the doubt. And if it's, you know, the other way you could say it, Andy, is yes, let me give you another example. So Andy, um, really, we work with uh, corporate executives and, or, or, or people that own businesses um, and, and or in the way you'd set up the what do you do side of things, you say, sure. hey, you know how a lot of people want to make work optional and keep it that way when it is. Or, or, or another way to say it, if you want the no side of that, is you could say, hey, would you think it's crazy that most people, even though they want work to be optional, it, it, they don't know that it actually is going to be and they're not clear about how to get it there. 
we help people with things like that. Mm-hmm. We, we're a, I'm a partner, I partnered with this financial planning group to help people uh, identify and pursue their best financial opportunities. Then you go right back into the process, but it just avoids a lot of time waste. Mm-hmm. And because if you say those, I mean, that's kind of your best bullets, right? If they don't give you the benefit of the doubt after that, yeah. you're not going to trick them into it by making them have coffee with you and you still have the same discussion. They'll be polite. They'll be kind. Most of them, some will be less, but you got to negotiate the benefit of the doubt. And yeah, you're not, and you have to do it quickly. Quickly. And I think that's the other part is that I think that there's, if you're going to talk about something that important, that you have to be willing to be really good at asking the right questions. And, but I will say this, and, and this is pretty nuanced, but I think there's a level of, rhetorical question that is um almost insulting totally agree and so i think that there is this is nuanced right this is emotional yeah. intelligence right like i can do math okay but i have a cousin who is a math major phd valedictorian we're kind of both doing math but she's doing math at a whole other level right yeah. so i think there's emotional intelligence and there's phone calls and then there's real deep emotional intelligence and there's really, and and we often get asked about, you know, give me a script, give me a script. I think what people need to do is they need to have great skills that they're so good at that skill that whatever situation they find themselves, they can navigate it because it's not like, you know, they take the Marines and say, okay, this is what the landscape is always going to look like. And this is going to be the temperature. No, it's, I'm going to train you. So whatever happens, you can navigate it. You know, yeah. athletes, it's not like this is exactly what's going to happen on this play. No, it's never. It, I mean, not never, but it's, how often does a play happen exactly like it's supposed to? Rarely. Right. There's too many variables. So what do you do? You just prepare yourself to be ready for all those different variables. And I really like, I like where you went and also, which is very quickly, if hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have someone else be part of this because what's their objection? What's their doubt? Yeah. You don't know what you're talking about. You're too new at this. I- and I like you. Understand that. Yeah. I just don't know that you're competent in evaluating your own ability in this space. Since since you've been doing this for a year, um, I'm a little worried. So if you can if you can give that benefit, get that piece out of the way by bringing in someone else. Now again, there's a level of person. If they're you know my clients when I first came in this business, Andy, were people that they consumed as much or more than they create. Right? They and the the meetings were at night at their kitchen table trying mm-hmm. to help them f- figure out where they were going to come up with 20 bucks a month for term insurance that they yeah. did. Succeeded. So those people, you don't need to bring in a person for, you just need to be really good at that level. And it's sure, really sure, sure, sure. good at that level with that person, yeah. but setting up the meeting, it still needs to be, get the benefit of the doubt going in and whatever it is that you feel honest and true about, like genuineness going in, you could say the same words I say, but I mean them. And if you don't mean them, it's, it's just like what we said before. I, I literally, before those calls would be saying I'd have on my desk, I want something from them. I want something for them, not from them. Mm-hmm. I want to have a great conversation, not do a presentation. Absolutely. And people can feel that. Like they can just, they can feel it. Like I, it's the, it, I'm sorry if this is a silly analogy, but it's the opposite of the Jedi mind trick. The Jedi mind trick is that I'm going to say something and I'm going to take over your brain. Yeah. And you have no control of what I'm about to say. Like it's, it's like basically brain slavery, right? That's the opposite of this. This is what this is. You can tell how much I actually genuinely care, and that draws you in. I'm not forcing anything. I'm not trying to trick you. I'm not being duplicitous. I'm not being like a sleazeball, push this on you. There's pressure. You got to do it. It's just like, wow, I feel like you really mean that. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, because you do. And something really maybe fundamental even to add if you're, if you're new to this, because again, I'm, 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 you know, two decades into this now. So the, way I, I, you know, answer the, what do you do question? I think that works well, but I think when you're making those outbound calls, maybe even the small nuance that you make is, is say, um, you know, you say, Hey, Andy, recently, as you know, I joined, I, I made a career change and I'm now part of a, a, a financial firm. And I'd love to, to tell you about what I do. Uh, if, if you had just a few seconds to talk about it now, would, is this a bad time? And most of the time they're going to be like, well, no, I mean, I got a few seconds, especially if they remotely respect or like you. And you say, so uh, any, one of the reasons I wanted to come in this business is I observed there's a lot of people that have a bunch of money that disappears unnecessarily to the tax system. Yeah. And, 
And they're going to, and so again, you don't have to say, Hey, do you know how in this case? Cause it's maybe the small nuances. One of the things that led me to the business and it's, if it's true, say it because what did lead you to the business? I mean, I, it's one of those things that I see a lot of advisors coming into the business because there's a lot of money disappears unnecessarily in the tax system. Sure. So lead with something like that. That's true. That's compelling. And that gets people to go benefit of the doubt. I don't like taxes either, you know? So yep. just, just don't, here's what I don't, don't, don't say, let me put you on my professional na- newsletter. They don't want to be on your newsletter. You know, your grandma might like the newsletter. Um, but, but that's about it. Maybe your mom and dad, you know, who, who knows? I totally agree. Yeah. It's, it's it, like, let's just, we're all adults. Get to it. You know what I mean? Let's just talk. If you can yeah, listen, I'm tell you what I do. Is that okay? Yeah. Well, yeah. just take a few minutes. Yeah. Is this uh, yeah. And I, you know, I hope, I hope this is encouraging to those who hear this that do train people in those situations. But sometimes I'm like, let's just not get so cute about it. Let's just be <laughs> straight. Like, just right. let's, like, I love the, don't be so clever. Just be clear. Just yeah. be clear. Cause again, it, I think you give them two options. I think you yeah. let them know, Hey, love to tell you about the kind of work I do now. Um, if you have it, when you have a few minutes, if now's okay, is now a good time or we can set something up for later. That way, if it is a, not a good time, they'll tell you, but most people are going to go, well, sure. If it's just a few minutes, get this out of the way. And then, and then here's a, here's a little life hack. Take a few minutes. Don't take, take 10. Absolutely. One of my favorite things, actually, I think you talked about this last episode is you had an appointment that was 30 minutes. You said, I'm only going to take 15. That's right. That is a light. That is a hack. Like, just so you guys know, like, that's a, that's a really unique thing you can do in almost all these different situations is, and I'll do this. And what's funny is <laughs> it's, it's not duplicitous. You're not being dishonest. But what I'm saying is like, often I'll have a meeting that's set for 30 minutes. I don't want to have that meeting for 30 minutes. I want it to be a 20 minute meeting. And so you know what I say, listen, we don't need 30 minutes because we generally don't. Um, I'm, I'm only, we only need to go for 20 minutes and guess what? They get 10 minutes and I get 10 minutes of my life back and who feels served. I feel served and they feel served. Right. So it's like, Hey, listen, I, I'm just going to take a couple minutes or you go, Hey, I'm going to take three minutes. And then you take three minutes. You go, my three minutes are up. Yeah. I mean, that might sound simple. Like well, who, who cares? I care. If you're going to tell me you're going to take a few minutes and you go, well, I, I'm on my fourth minute and that's more than a few. So uh, I'm done. Yeah. It's just an emotional awareness. Right? That's right. Anyway, and, and, and I think, I think in all this stuff and where we'll go in our, our last and final episode of this particular series, uh, cause there's just enough to it to where I don't want to, I don't want to cram it into today is we, we want to, we want to go over, um, again, the, how to continue to build on that entry influence, that entry benefit of the doubt that hopefully you have when you come into the, the first actual conversation with a client that's, that's agreed upon meeting. And how you have that first location, in our case, we call it a location phase meeting with the client to enhance and magnify the benefit of the doubt. And we'll talk about that next time. Awesome. Thanks, Wes. Thanks, Andy.